All right, let's take a look at solving another radical equation. Now, one of the things we need to remember and what we saw in the last video is that we need to isolate a radical first before we can apply the power property. So in order for us to do that, we just need to move the 1 to the other side. And so we have 3x plus 1 is equal to x minus 1. Even though we do have some x's that are outside of the radical, we do have this guy that's inside. So we need to make sure that we raise both sides of the equation to the appropriate power so that we can cancel that. Since this is a square root, squaring both sides of the equation will help me eliminate that guy. Now, <clears throat> what you need to remember here is that you're squaring each side of the equation, you're not squaring each piece. On the left side of the equation, when you square the square root, it's going to cancel, and you're going to get just 3x plus 1. On the other side, you need to remember that you're using that special product of squaring a binomial. So that's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, an easy way to remember this and not get it confused with the difference of squares is to remember that you are squaring a binomial. So you have to have that 2ab piece in the middle. And so if we remember that, then we end up with x squared. The 2ab means 2 times x times negative 1, which is a negative 2x. Your plus b squared is going to be a plus 1. If I were to square negative 1, I get positive 1. So this guy's always going to be positive. And it's the sign right here that determines the sign of the middle term, this being a minus 2x. When I have this equation without the radical, I have to identify what type of equation this is. Since I see I've got the x squared, this tells me that I do have something that's quadratic. So with quadratic equations, I use quadratic methods, which is first get everything to one side of the equation. So when I do that, I get 0 equals x squared. Now when I move the 3x over, that's going to make this a minus 5x. When I move the 1 over, that 1 cancels with the 1 that's already over here. 1 minus 1 is 0. And I've got this guy. Now I'd like to try to factor this. As long as we remember that the first thing we do when we factor is take out the greatest common factor, we'll be in good shape. So the GCF here is x. When I factor that out, I get x minus 5. And this guy is factored completely. There's nothing else I can do with the x minus 5. Now to finish solving this, I use that 0 factor theorem. So that means that this guy gives me x equals 0. And the other solution comes from this, which is x equals 5. Now, since this is a radical equation, we have to make sure that we check our solutions because sometimes, sometimes they don't always work out. So let's check the x equals 0. When we check it, we always go back into the original equation. So here I have 3, and instead of the x, I'm just going to write parentheses for right now. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to write what I say my solution is. I'm saying the solution is 0. So let's check that. Well, this gives me the square root of 1 plus 1. I want to know, does that equal 0? And of course, we see that no, um, 2 does not equal 0. So what I would say here is that x equals 0 is extraneous. When you get an answer that doesn't work out, in these guys, we're, we're going to call them extraneous. Now, when I say this doesn't work out, I'm not saying I made a mistake. But you're going to see later on, I'm going to graph this on the graphing calculator, and you'll see that the reason it doesn't work out is because of the limitations we have with this symbol right here. The square root symbol only returns positive values, not negative values. So you see here, if the square root of 1 could have been negative 1, because when 1 does have two square roots, the square roots of 1 are 1 and negative 1. But when I use this symbol and ask for the square root, I'm only asking for the positive or the principal square root. So that's why it doesn't work. Let's check the 5. So again, let's use the parentheses. Be very careful with everything that we write. See, I almost 
miss something there. I'm saying that my solution is 5, so I'm going to fill in those parentheses with 5. Is the square root of 16 plus 1 equal to 5? Well, let's see. 4 plus 1 does equal 5. Everything checks out there. So that tells me that my solution is x equals 5. Now we, what we want to do is we want to check with the graphing calculator. So let's get that set up. All right, let's go back to the original equation that we have up here. So I'm going to graph this. So I have the square root of 3x plus 1. Make sure you do close off your parentheses for the square root plus 1. I want to find out where does this guy equal x. So when I graph this, here's the square root guy. Oh. There's the square root. And then here's x. So we see from this graph that there's only one place where these guys intersect. It's going to be right here. That matches up with my solution that I already found when x equals 5. Well, why did I get x equals 0? Well, remember what I said about the square root? That symbol only returns the positive value. What if we had allowed this guy to return negative values? So negative, the square root of 3x plus 1, plus 1. Now, keep in mind that this square root right here it's like half of a parabola. And that's all that that guy is. Because if it's going to be a function, it has to pass that vertical line test. Well, this is what would happen if it were negative. You see, you'd have the full-on form of your parabola right here. And in this case, you see that not only do I intersect it when x is 5, but also back over here when x is 0. So that's why I've got the two solutions. But remember, that's not what my graph is. That's not how the solution works. Because the square root is only the positive square root. I only have this part of it. So that's why I only have one solution. Now, it could be that I have two solutions sometimes. Like I could have a line right here that could cross through that square root function twice. It just doesn't happen in this particular situation.